Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you here today to XRL's X2 division, the final XRL points paying race of the year 2021. It has been a crazy year. It's been an interesting year. This year has spawned two games, prior one, F1 2020, and now F1 2021. We are not quite through the entirety of this season, though. We should be shortly in about a few more months. About February or March, the season should end. But as it stands right now, this is the last race that any points paying XRL division will be hosting this year. There will be a two week break for Christmas coming up shortly. Starting for this race seems to be running a little bit behind for whatever reason. I'm not 100% sure why, but it seems like we're running just a little bit behind, although people are starting to uh, ready up or at least mess around with the readying up button. But real quickly, before we get too far deep into this, though, one sec. We'll want to go ahead and see if we can check out the standings, assuming they've been updated. Yes, they have been. All right, so when it comes to the Manufacturers Championship, first one we'll talk about per usual. At the bottom is the Alpine team. They only have 67 points. Ninth is Alfa Romeo with 88 Eighth is the Scuderia AlphaTauri team with 112. Seventh is Red Bull with 146. There's a very close fight for fourth. Sixth is Williams with 155. Just one point out from Aston Martin with 156. And they're just two points out from McLaren with 158. Scuderia Ferrari has 164 points in third. Second is Mercedes with 232 points. Haas has 257 points. Then when you come down to the Drivers' Championship, going from the bottom to the top, Fable 5-2-1 has... Earned only a single point this season. FG Hakkinen has earned two. Mr. Schmee has earned 16. XRL Low has earned 17. 16th is XRL Ozzy. He has earned 19 points. The Lone Retreat has earned 27 points. Careless Jackson has earned 29 points. Mr. Neon 713 has earned 32. RB Lama has earned 34. Yamanuver Maneuver has earned 38. Verti has earned 48. XRL Zola has earned 54, which puts him just one out from eighth, with his Javis down with 55. Javis down himself is only two points out from his teammate in seventh. XRL Torpedo has 57 points. XRL Pelly has 79 points. XRL Edgar has 85 points. Who is in fifth? Smoothie is fourth. He has 105 points. Third is Mr. Anderson with 112 points. XRL Dino is second with 131. And XRL Waldo is leading the point series point standings with 144 points right now. We are looking at a potential for rain falling in qualifying, but right now is a nice sunny circuit. As we prepare to ready everything up, we're going to see who the first person is to get out on circuit in a bit here. Man, now I have a mad hankering for pizza. Thanks, Fiend. You are very welcome. Anyways, Fiend, good to see you're here. Mm -hmm. So, right off the bat, some things we want to talk about. Verti, he's obviously serving a qualifying ban, so that means 18 drivers will be taking the track. Three of them are not going to get a chance to advance. But the real thing is, rain is a potential issue in qualifying. How quickly do you want to get on track and commit to saying a lap in that scenario? Uh, it depends when the rain comes out, I think. If the rain is due to come out in the next five minutes, then go out, do a lap as quickly as possible. If it's coming nearer the end, so let's say with about five minutes to go, then you can, you can maybe wait a few minutes. Let the track... Uh, Rubber, get some rubber on the track from other drivers and maybe go a little bit quicker. Fair point. First driver to get out into the circuit right now is Taurus TTV. As he is running that Williams already through the S's. You know, I've seen this track so much over this weekend. I partook, although not for very long, but I partook in the dev race. Broadcasted, realistic. Broadcasted X3 earlier. Now I'm broadcasting next 2 I'm going to have nightmares about Mexico tonight just saying <laughs> mexico it's not a bad track to be fair it's no i agree um, it's... but it's also a scenario where it's like i like mexico but i also really like mexico before it got tilkified true true to be fair though this is probably the best f section in the game to drive compared to places like usa that we had last week and um, uh, we'll as agree well to as disagree on that. We'll agree to disagree on that. 
I think Suzuka has better S's. Oh, Suzuka's okay. Suzuka's okay if you once you get used to it. Yeah. All right. Well, first driver who looks like he's going to be saying a lap will be Taurus as we're following him around the circuit right now. About half the field is either on outlaps or out on circuit right now. Lowe is in the middle of a lap as he comes to the end of sector one with a 28.550. All right, Fiend, you partook earlier today in the X3 race, and it's yes. reasonable to assume that some of that experience will pay off here. Tire strategy. We've seen throughout most of the weekend or at least going into this weekend, everyone was just like, maximize the amount of time you can spend on softs. Soft, yes. soft, 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 soft. Keep it as soft as you can. But we started to see that kind of change. In the XRRL race, we saw the eventual winners, they spent about the first half of the race on medium tires buried in the back. And it, for them, it was more just timing the usage of the softs to get them up to the field. Then you come to earlier today in the X3 race, our second place finisher, Kelby Spark, he never touched the sauce at all today, and he came back from a drive through penalty to do so. So could the conventional wisdom of just staying on sauce as long as possible be falling out the door? Um, so soft tires, they're uh, pretty quick uh, throughout the this throughout the race. I mean, there's such a, a big difference in time between the mediums and the softs that you want to just spend as much time as on softs as possible i think still um it's up to the drivers kind of not to be too aggressive whilst on the softs because that's when mistakes are made and then obviously if that happens then you know they'll have to go on to harder tires um with mediums i guess if you start on softs then you get the pace the speed at the start of the race then go on to mediums um, sorry, I've just seen what Chubby's put in the chat. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but yeah, medium second stint on the mediums, then you can use them when the tracks rub it in, so they won't be as horrible to use. Um, you do bring up a fair point. The rubbering and conditioning of the track is extremely important. Real quickly, you said Shelby said something in the chat. I don't have access to Twitch chat while doing broadcasting. What did he say? If oh, he just said that uh, these people who destroy me with their eyes closed, uh, Ingrid didn't highlight my message. Nah. Well, at this point, seven drivers have set their lap times. Herbagos, though, is in the 140s. Now he has improved up into the 116s. So right now, 116s to high 115s are the way to go. Azza is at the top of the time sheet with the 115.946. But the man I'm really going to be interested in watching, with two men, I should say, will be Fine Waldo and Mr. Anderson. Anderson leading the championship fight in the realistic league he's third in the championship fight here in x2 he's going to i think he has a serious chance of possibly fighting for two different championships as edgar now goes to the top with a 115.876 all right so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead ride silently for a full lap on board with mr anderson and the Haas here around mexico so you hear what it's like around this circuit
And Anderson goes right to the top with a 115.872. His teammate Waldo will be crossing the line in a short period of time. I'll be interested to see if he can match his teammate's time. But at the top, two of the top three are X3 veterans. So it goes to show that there may be some value in spending more time within XRL, trying to work your way up through the grid. Azda and Anderson, both are former X3 drivers who got moved up to X2. So yeah, I, at least in my opinion, I guess you could call it a ladder system. I think it's working. We're seeing people improve gradually from one tier to another, getting faster and then getting moved farther up. The only mm. downside is if this keeps going on, um, I won't be able to see Anderson or Azda at all in a few years because they'll be in X1 <laughs> and that conflicts with X3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, um, Anderson is pretty quick, so he'll be in X1, so uh, you won't get to see him race uh, much. Um, Azda in P3, which is a good start. But Taurus with oh. a 115 6 goes into first place. So. Very respectable time on his but, end. Yeah. Not seen him race much, so good stuff. At this point, 11 drivers have set lap times. Zola is the odd man out right now. He is the only one on track who has not gotten into the 116 range, and he's invalidated his current lap as well. So it seems like he's struggling a little bit with the Aston Martin. He's not the only one, Mr. Neon has just invalidated his lap there in the S's. We still have about half of this session left to go, so there is still time, and the sky still looks relatively clear, so I wouldn't worry too much about rain falling. Uh, I got a chance to talk to Zola earlier in the weekend, and when it came to weather, when it came to strategy, he says that he's basically discounted everything that the guys at the box are telling him. He's basically doing the entire strategy on the fly. So I guess in that case, Zola is the series own personal Sebastian Vettel basically trying to strategize everything on his own now. <laughs> <laughs> um, strategy, whatever you pick at the start will always change as you go through the race just because of safety cars. And hopefully not, but damage as well, you know. Um, don't know who's on the lap at the minute actually. Well, Pianist Shoe is on an outlap. Smoothie and Mr. Neon are both in laps, although Neon has aborted his lap. As Smoothie is going to go on and go through. Smoothie is going to try and be the 15th driver a set of time. Flavor, really, so this is a really interesting scenario for Flavor because Flavor has been cutting his teeth in the Dev Series X3 in the Realistic League. We don't typically see him a lot in X2. He normally only shows up as a reserve. I'm going to be honest, nothing against Flavor. There is no way that he's going to walk out of Q1 in qualifying. His pace has always been in race with just sticking with the strategy. And normally what happens in a race with Flavor, he sticks with the strategy. The race completely changes, ruins that strategy. And he sticks with it. And then sometimes by the end, the race comes back and favors that strategy again irregardless so yeah his his strength has never been qualifying nothing against him i don't think we can anticipate seeing him in the next round of quality no nah, but we saw earlier on he got a top 10 finish in uh, x3 which is a decent result uh, it's points um you know his pace this weekend in in around mexico has been has been all right to be honest if he sticks with the plan then he could he yeah. could get a result now, I hope, I do hope so that he can keep it up, but it also, you'd expect to have good pace. He ran nearly the, I think he ran the entire dev race. Uh, he was there for the entirety of the XRL race, he earned points there in what turned into a bit of a miniature crash fest near the end. He earned points, and then on merit and penalty count back, he ran the top 10 almost all day today in X3. So, yeah, his pace has been picking up. And I think he's memorized this track so much. I think he's the only person right now who's probably seen this track more this weekend than I have. So. <laughs> well, it's certainly paying off for him, um, with X, in, especially in X3 earlier on. Um, yep. Smooth has gone into 14th place after his lap. Uh, Waldo's on an outlap, and unfortunately, Neon has invalidated his second attempt. As it stands right now, Smoothie is on the bubble with a 116.964, with Zola and Flavor on the outside looking in. Waldo has now begun his flying lap attempt. 
This will be his second time of doing it. He went out on track earlier at the same time as his teammate, Mr. Anderson. But while Anderson was able to set a time in the 115.8s, Waldo invalidated and was not able to commit to a time at all. He's going around again. Now he goes into that really start-stop Mickey Mouse section at the beginning of Sector 2. A lot of it, basically flat, hard corners that really specializes on taxing the mechanical grips of the car. And then you come into these S's. You need to have good downforce and a good wing setup. And that's one of two things when it comes to building these cars. Now I talked a little bit about this in the uh, XRL race, and I'm, I'll say the same thing here. You, a lot of people, yeah, there are a lot of nice straightaways here. You have three DRS straights here on this circuit. And there are plenty of smaller straights as well. But mm -hmm. realistically, you want to run this track with moder high or at least moderately high aerodynamic setup. The air up here at Mexico is very, very thin. It's one of the highest elevations that Formula One ever goes to. And it's maybe a start and stoppy track, but the S's, you can lose so much time or go off so easily there. You basically have to maximize your wings there. We have seen every now and then a few people go with really low wing setups, and they're fast throughout all of Sector 1 and Sector 3. They're relatively good at also, mm. but they lose so much time in Sector 2. It's so, so, so important to get laps in using high downforce settings around here simply because of how thin the air is out here. Well, yeah, it's a fine balance, isn't it, between um, not losing as much time through a corner and, and gaining as much time through the straights as you possibly can without, without kind of going too far one side or the other. Here's a very strange decision. Waldo's finally set a lap. It was a 120.6, but, and I didn't notice this at first, he's trying to do this on the medium tire compound. I don't know what his strategy is. This is, uh, with everyone else on softs, I wouldn't feel confident. Ooh, look at that twitch out of the mm. final quarter. Yeah, he's trying to save his soft tires for, Q, um, for Q2, so that he has more so that he has more soft tyres available to him, but currently sitting in 12th, um, looks like it's working so far. 116.624. Mm. So right Only now, 4, Mr. Soft J -led. Yeah, right now, Mr. Schmee is the driver on the bubble with a 116.7999. He's invalidated the lap he's in the middle of right now. With a little bit less than three minutes to go, Zola is back out on circuit, going to try and get a better lap in here. And that was Schmeeker in the corner, I think. Just seen. Yeah, Schmee cutting the track a little bit to get into the pit. It's a bit of a naughty boy. That will likely result in a penalty post-race, or at least post-session. Edgar, with a time in the 115.8, he has an 8.76. He retires. He feels very confident that he doesn't have to worry. And frankly, I think everyone who's in the 115 range can go ahead and retire without issue. Zola invalidates, got a little bit sideways in the S's. He saved it, but is sideways and loses time and loses the legality of that lap. He'll have to go again. Flavor has set a lap at 118.120. Zola, 117.370. They're the only ones not in the 116 range right now. Zola desperately needs to start improving if he wants a chance to get in. Shmi is on the outside looking in. Snoothie is on the bubble with a 116.683. And find Waldo. He is huff... Huffing? That's not the term I want to use. He is hoofing it around the circuit right now in those medium tires. This is his fourth lap on this set of mediums. And I'm guessing what they did in that machine is they filled the thing up with fuel, threw some tires on it, and said, just go, 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 get in a rhythm. So the advantage that Waldo has is that the mediums won't fall off in pace, really, over these last, because he's going to have time for this lap and one more. And the yeah, fuel load is going to continue to drop. So he's going to go faster and faster as long as he is not going to make any mistakes. Oh, yeah, he's going to be able to do a little bit of extra practice as well if he wants to on those medium tyres. Learn the track a little bit more. Um, get some laps done, some times in, and hopefully get through to Q2. Smoothie and Jalabin 
Deleben have both gone ahead and retired from the session. Deleben thinks he's safe with the 116.553. Smoothie realizes that it's up to fate. He is on the bubble right now. And Zola has aborted his lap attempt. Oh, and that's a Haas. Is that Wano? Yes, Wano's had a spin. Wano spun coming out of the final corner into pit lane. He reset onto the track once everyone got by. But he's not going to get another chance at a lap because there's just not enough time to get around for him. So that's it. So the time he had, a 116.624, that's it. He needs to hope that Zola cannot nail this lap and that Shmi cannot nail it either. Well, Shmi's not gonna have a chance. Shmi invalidated, he will not get to the line in time. So despite spinning, Waldo is in. So Waldo, 14th on medium. Zola just getting the toe off his teammate at the beginning of his flying lap. That toe didn't help very much though. Zola was actually down at the end of Sector 1. Sector 2 is where he's been suffering the most thus far. He cannot afford to make another mistake here. And he took the S's to nicely. Improve by, he needs to improve by about, well, I'd say, seven tenths. Seven tenths. He's about two tenths at the minute. He needs a flying Sector 3 to get to Q2. And Zola has punished the ever-living crap out of those tires. This is the fifth lap he's done on this wow. set at the line. 17 -1. No. Not good enough. He did improve, but not enough. Well, that's a shame. That's a shame. But 17th, awesome. not the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, we missed it while it happened, but XRL Pelly went ahead and set a lap in the 15s with a 115.651. So we have five drivers all within the 15 range by the end of Q1, but I think Waldo will probably join them if he was able to sneak in at Mexico, a circuit where on single lap pace, softs are way better than mediums, and he still snuck in on mediums. I think he might be a contender for the pole if he times everything right and gets in to the final round of qualifying. But the four drivers that will not advance. Verti will not advance. He has served in a qualifying ban. Flavor, Zola, not fast enough in the end. Okay, thank you, game. Thank you for taking away the uh, lineup for me. And the last driver that will not be able to advance will be Mr. Shmi and the Red Bull. The 15 drivers that will advance to Q2, though. Smoothie, 25 in the McLaren. Fine Waldo in the Haas. Gleben in the Alpine, along with his teammate, Herbago, 91. XRL Torpedo in exits the spot, and Alphatari will both advance, as will XRL Low in the Aston Martin. Mr. Neon, 713 in the Aston Martin will advance, as will XRL Dino in the Mercedes. Pio de in the Red Bull will advance. Azda, he's in the 115, so he easily advances in that Mercedes. XRL Edgar in the Ferrari will advance. Anderson in the Haas will advance. Pelly in the other Ferrari will advance, as will Taurus TTV in the Williams. All right, and we prepare to load the circuit up for the next round of qualifying now. A little bit cleaner track. Word okay, is so from higher up that we may be getting rain either by the end of Q2 or, and this is the more likely one, getting rain in qualifying session three. Right now the track is clear, but at least if it was my if it was my decision, my choice, I'd get out there immediately and start saying laps without hesitation. Because I would not want to be caught out trying to figure out, oh, I want to choose tires, or oh, I want the track to clear up, if all of a sudden you start sprinting down in the last five minutes of this session. Yeah. Ten minutes, then, before the rain is meant to start, basically. We've got four or five drivers, six drivers now out on track, doing their outlaps. So I guess what you've just said is kind of what we're seeing. Drivers coming out, doing their laps. 
No one on track right now has the mediums on. Everyone is on soft. Three drivers have mediums equipped on their cars in pit lane. That's Mr. Neon, Smoothie 25, and Punitive Shoe. So the big thing is right now, we know that softs are faster than mediums in single lap pace. But if you know that you're fast enough, you could go ahead, try to run out there on mediums quickly enough, pray that the rain comes really quickly, and you could sneak in to the start of the race on medium tires. The counterpoint to that, though, is there's no guarantee, but depending on how wet the track is, even if rain's not falling, the track might still be a little bit damp and absolutely will be green at the start of the race. Starting on a clean green racetrack, damp or not, on mediums might not be the greatest thing in the world. Maybe not. If the track's green, then you want to be starting on softs, really, because you'll have more, more grip, I think. Mm -hmm. And the mediums, anyway, are just so so dodgy compared to the softs that softs are probably the way to go. Either way. And as, and as we're talking about that, everyone, with the exception of Mr. Neon, has elected to abandon their medium tires. So 14 of the 15 drivers in the session now have softs equipped to their cars, but we're only seeing about eight drivers on track right now. A ninth one is starting to come out into the track. That will be Smoothie 25. But a lot of people just seem to be wanting to stand by and wait and pit lane for the moment. I wouldn't feel confident about that strategy myself. Well, Waldo's invalidated. So he'll have to go again. Taurus has invalidated and is going back into the pits. I think that's... So uh, that leaves it to Lowe coming mm. out of the final corner now. He will be the driver that will set the time everyone else will be chasing. It's a 16.3. Which isn't too bad. Might need to go quicker for a top 10 though. Uh, next up is Hrubago. It goes a 15.9, which is a little bit better. And then J Lab on an outlap, smooth on an outlap. X has just set a purple sector one, so he's in the middle of a flyer right now. Okay. So it looks like he'll be the next one to cross the line in that Honda powered Alpha Tari. the S's, cuts it in the last at last bit of the S's, he cuts the circuit, invalidates the lap, he immediately backs out of it to save as much fuel as possible and start recharging the ERS. No bueno for him. Azda in the middle of the lap right now. The fuel light's flashing, he doesn't care. He is sending it bonsai style through the S's, using up every bit of track available. The Mercedes nearly sliding out on him under multiple occasions. He very nearly runs in the back of the Alpine. He doesn't care. It's just him, the car, and the track right now. Going through stadium section. And shoots out of the final corner with speed. At the line, 115.973. So Azza has not yet set a lap slower than 115.9. Good job on his part. Yeah, good stuff. All three drivers that have set time to roll in the 115.9s. Less than five hundredths between them. Gilebend is going to go ahead and break down. And Smoothie's had an accident! Smoothie has had an accident there in the S's and the car is right in the middle of the racetrack! And Pierre Deschew has to swerve to avoid. And he's not the only one. It looked like Taurus had to swerve to avoid also, as will X hits the spot. X sees the yellow flags and pulls over, though. He was already on an invalid lap. But want to talk about making things hairy. Waldo gets by. Thankfully, his lap was invalid as well, so he wasn't hoofing it. But bad news for Smoothie. He will the qualifying shootout for pole. Yeah, Smooth will be starting in 15th now. Because he hasn't set a lap time yet. Waldo's just started Waldo. a lap. Uh, another lap. <laughs> yeah. And every single person on track using soft tire compounds right now. So I think there is no element of strategy. I think everyone's just trying to get laps in. The threat of rain 
however light it might be, is enough to make everyone say, look, I'd rather start on a quicker tire with a few laps on it on a green racetrack than, you know, run the risk of destroying my car on a track I have no grip on. Exactly. Um, soft tires, like we've been saying, are a good tire to start the race on. Um, Waldo through the S's. And the Invalid. interesting thing, ah, if Waldo could get a lap in, the interesting thing is Waldo set his time in Q1 on the mediums, so if he, he can just go out there, punish the crap out of these softs, he basically could have a free set of softs for the race, if I understand correctly. Um, or a free set of softs for Q3, if he yes. advances into Q3. I guess that's another way of looking at it. Yeah, Q3, I think. Um, they'll go again, I think. Yeah, he's going again. Uh, Dino Invalid. I know it's the Alpine boys of j -Lab and Frubago. Pelly will be coming to the line a little bit before them, though. Oh, yeah. Set the like second the fastest team. time in Q1. What can you do here in Q2? Let's say final corner. Stays to the inside as much as possible and goes fastest with a 1 minute 15.4. Nice. So times are falling across the board. Oh, and the Alpine boys got into each other. Oh, no. Gilebin has already gotten into the pits, but Herbago is still backwards at pit lane entrance. And the good news for him is that there's enough clear track that he'll be able to get in, but the Alpine drivers getting into each other coming out of Stadia. Oh, Waldo finally got Purple Sector 2 in. Oh, lovely. So Just needs to keep it clean. Yeah. Torpedo went into 7th with a 16.1. But Waldo, around the final corner. 15.3. To the top. And I think with that, Waldo can go ahead, come into the pits, yank those tires off, and yes, relax. Chill out. Okay, so it's unlikely it'll happen. So, um, yeah, so rain in uh, about 10 to 15 minutes, apparently, which uh, means that it's probably not likely in Q2, but may happen in Q3. And what that could mean is that drivers might only get one serious attempt at setting a lap, and that will be at the very start of Q3. And we don't know how wet the circuit may or may not be then. It could be very, very borderline. Imagine if everyone goes out there on softs and then the track gets soaked in the middle of flying laps, they shut down DRS, and then it just becomes a matter of survival for everyone. It could get really hairy in the shootout for the pole. The good news though is that once you've qualified into Q3, nothing is gonna happen that will drop you lower than 10th at least. But still, it could be hairy to say the least. Yeah, it could if... Um... DRS gets disabled, it's too wet to do a lap, then do you, you can either set your time and try and get back to the pits as, as safely as possible, or you just pit and hope that you can still qualify well on inters or wet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am watching Extra El Dino right now. This lap, he's been up by about 17 hundredths at the end of Sector 2, coming to the line. He's now moved up by 3 tenths, 115.550. Mr. Nice. Anderson has crashed out. Oh, no. So one of your championship contenders with an accident in Sector 2 in the S's. Here comes Exit to spot to take 6th place. And I'm Anderson in 10th. We'll be starting 10th as long as... Oh, no, maybe won't. Yeah, we'll be starting 10th as long as people uh, don't go quicker than that 16.0. Mr. Neon is in the middle of a new lap right now. All right, coming to the party now is Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, go ahead, include your audio. Big exit in the S's. What happened out there? Zola jinxed me. End the story. <laughs> what did Zola say? He just, just like, oh, watch him, watch him. Oh, you've, oh, you've got enough fuel and all that. And I was just like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. And I was up my time and, yeah. Uh, what? 
Agit, yeah. Oh well. Oh, no, I don't, I, oh well is the key word there. Yeah. Oh well. They stole yeah. the race. Do you think you can recover from this and get back into the podium positions? No. Well, who knows? I did it last night. Who knows? I was last last night and then... Well, not last, but I was last after a lap one or something because of damage and then... I got back to what P3 last night. So yeah, I'll have a go at it. We'll see what happens, but... Who knows? Alright, well, we'll be looking forward to you trying to charge your way back up through the field, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, Don't cause yourself any more trouble. Uh, you should be saying that to Zoe with other people. Hmm? <laughs> 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 uh, I'll catch you later, lads. Hopefully in a good way, not in a bad way. Hopefully, yeah. Alright. Alright, cool. so now I need to go get my shotgun and make sure I don't have to worry about any Mr. Anderson stalking me outside my window when he tries to catch me later. <laughs> No, Alright, well, looking at the times stuff. across the line, Jelebind has guessed at a time of 116.076, so he is only 23 thousandths out from Mr. Anderson's time. I think he has a serious chance to squeeze Anderson out, but it's going to be difficult. Here shoe, one of the other drivers trying to get in. The time to beat, 116.053. It looks like if you're not in the 115s, you're not going to make it into the pole shootout. Pure shoe immediately invalidates going into turn one. <laughs> and now we have XRL Zola in the Twitch chat saying that he'll get revenge for that, Gregory. Uh, referring to Mr. Anderson. So that's some really intense bantering going on back and forth between some of the drivers. Neither of them good enough to make it into Q3 at Mexico, apparently. <laughs> it's probably a good thing, because at the way that's been, I have a little bit of reason to doubt that the two of them would be able to keep their cars on the racing line in the wet. <laughs> wet race, Solar and Anderson side by side, anything could happen. There will be fireworks. All right, well, Anderson has now finally been squeezed out of the top 10 as Gilevin has gotten in with a 115.861. So as I said earlier, if you're not in the 115s, you're not going to advance in. Torpedo, punitive shoe, on track, looking to go for another shot. Mr. Neon is still in pit lane, and with only a minute and 15 seconds left, I'm going to be honest, there's no chance for him to advance. He's not going to get out on track in time to get another lap in. So it's Torpedo and punitive shoe fighting against Low and Herbago for the bottom two positions in Q3. In torpedoes on a lot going through the S's. Oh, which maybe breaks a little bit too much there. Maybe not. But it was clean. He's Yeah, but he's down on time by nearly a full mm. half second at, at coming out of sector 2 alone. Yeah, unfortunately. So well, let's see how he goes in this final corner then. Set up for another lap. So, four tenths down on his time. But he's going again. For punitive shoe, it looks like the dream is dead. He has invalidated the lap he is currently on, and I do not imagine he'll be able to make it to the start finish line in time for another lap. I could be wrong. It's gonna be close, but I don't think it's gonna happen. I mean it he probably I mean he probably won't unless he cuts the track, which he's nope. not allowed to do. Nope. And he's, he's not out. Made it. Cool. So it's all down to Torpedo. Torpedo down by 1,500s at the end of Sector 1. The good news for Torpedo, it's all clean track ahead of him. He is basically the only person of any consequence on the racetrack. Yeah, he's the, the last one, news, isn't he? Yeah, but the bad news, though, is that he needs to improve by nearly a third of a second. It's actually a little bit closer to more than a quarter of a second, but saying a third of a second sounds a little bit more dramatic. So that's a little bit more well, of an aggressive, up. a little bit more of an aggressive S section for him, and he's up on his time, which is good. Needs a big sector three though to to get into the top ten. Only up by sixty-four thousand at the end of sector two, I coming out of the tighter. final corner. Needs to be Will tighter. Will he be in or out? No, he lost it all in sector three. The session's yeah. over. On the exit of the Mr. final Anderson. corner, he needed to be as close to the curb as he possibly could be. Well, and Mr. Anderson's out. time 
of 116.053 is like a near impenetrable wall and all 10 drivers who advance to the next round are, get, are spaced by no more than 611 thousandths of a second between them. Waldo, Pelli, Dino, Edgar, Azda, Taurus, exits the spot, Yelebin, Lowe, and Herbago all advance. The ones that will not advance will be Mr. Anderson, Torpedo, Pune Shu, Mr. Neon, and Smoothie 25. So now we begin to load into the next round of qualifying. It's still relatively sunny around the circuit here. So we again, I think we're going to be able to see at least a few laps done on dry tires, full slicks with DRS still in the final session. So yeah. we may see pole decide very early on. There is a bit of a haze starting to descend on the track. But if drivers were to get out right as soon as possible, I think they could squeeze it in. Yeah, get out. Get a lot done before the rain. It's looking very cloudy, like you said. Yes. I'm seeing movement in the Haas pit. I'm seeing movement in the oh, Alpine pit as well. Once one person the first goes driver out, everybody to get goes out. out. And the first one out is going to be Taurus TTV. And there is an immediate train that forms. Choo choo, we're going on the Pole Challenge Express. It looks like there are only going to be two drivers still on pit road here. I think that one driver in, in pit lane. It's just a Ferrari. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Pelly. Pelly's holding on a bit. I think one set of drivers are in a good position. Gilebend and Herbago, they are teammates and they are right next to each other on track. One of them could give a draft to the other if they so chose, but with rain coming, are you willing to sacrifice your lap time and take a guaranteed 10th place starting position for your teammate to have a chance at the pole? I, that's a big thing to ask for some of these people. Yeah, it depends how much time you've got, how much fuel you've put in the car, how well you can- Here's something else of note. No, there's really almost no backing off going on. Waldo was right on Taurus's rear end all the way until he got to the stadium section. He's still really close to him, even now. And Edgar has the Mercedes of Asda right on. Asda comes almost to a dead stop there in stadium just to get some clean track to show you like everyone's that anxious to get out. So this will work out well for Taurus. He's out on circuit. The track is still green and clean for the moment. He still has DRS and soft oh, tires. Oh, and the rain has started. Yeah, it started. The rain has begun. Riding on board with Taurus TTV. Rain beginning to fall on the circuit. This is where everything gets wild. If DRS shuts, slams shut after Taurus has crossed the line, then Taurus might be able to sneak a pull out here. Pelly needs to get out of the pits as quickly as he possibly can. He's already so on the way down, but it might be too late. I don't think DRS is going to stay open for much longer. Through the S's. Taurus, no attack, no chance to to Takuma Sato style. Pelly coming out of the pits too late. Not sure what's happening on my thing, but it, he was coming out and now he's gone back in. I don't know what's happening. Waldo though. is through. Now Edgar is through the final DRS zone. Taurus invalidates his lap. Waldo has invalidated his as well. So now point goes to Edgar. Edgar and the Ferrari trying to sneak a pole position in the rain. The time on the time 16, sheet, 116.7. Slow up. That is... Azda, yeah. 116.896. Here comes Low. And that's how much the rain. That's how much the rain affects um, the lap times. A 16 oh no! seven is Herbago, pole time. Massive accident coming oh. across the line. He did get a lap in, but a massive accident. And the car looks like it might be terminal. No, he's able to keep going.
but that's it. I think those six times are going to be the best ones. And Edgar has a little bit of fortune, a little bit of luck on his side, and I think no one else is going to get into the 116s for the rest of this session. So on Taurus. the track, you can see it wetting up now for Taurus Sweet and day. Waldo. This is looking really bad for them right now. Still Set have DRS time. available, but Taurus is at a minute coming across the end of Sector 2 alone. There's just not enough grip on slick, hot tires on a damp and wetening racetrack. I still don't know if wetening is a word. It sounds like it should be a word. Oh, Taurus oh, spins! Taurus. And he's into the inside wall and crashes right at pit lane exit! And oh, Waldo has oh, nowhere to no, go! And just... Waldo gets clipped! Oh, dear. And oh, now Waldo Taurus hits just... the inside wall and Max... And Waldo's got five-stop grid penalty and he's blocked the track! Edgar's been disqualified oh, for blocking wow. pit lane but Edgar shouldn't be disqualified! That's bull crap! That's intentional! That's... That's... There's... Yeah, that's bullcrap. That had to be intense. You can't. Ah, I'm sorry. That. All right, so, so. That looked intentional as crap. I understand the track is wet, and that is very, very problematic. But there is no way that those two drivers had 10 seconds each to get out of the way, and they both basically stopped. One of them dead sideways on pit lane exit. I right, guess so. So, Taurus spins yeah um, indeed waldo coming round as taurus is trying to Gilevin has crashed out now in the final oh corner. no jayla so taurus spins waldo coming around the corner taurus obviously wanting to get out the exit so he doesn't get disqualified hits waldo um and hits waldo spun. which spins him and then uh through no fault of his own edgar trying to get back into the pits gets disqualified and uh, now Asda's disqualified. Oh, this is still going on. Absolutely. Asda seems. had the wing already ripped off, and the car just went around on his own. He came to a stop in the pit lane, and as he was backing up off the track, the game disqualified him. But yet, for whatever reason, it didn't disqualify Waldo or Taurus when they did the same thing. Absolute scenes at Mexico. Well, Waldo's out on track now on intermediate tires. As it stands, though, Lowe is now going to be starting on the front row with Jelebin, although Jelebin destroyed his car, only no. because those two were able to get times in. Herbago, despite destroying his car across the line, looks like he's going to be starting fourth, simply because two bullcrap DSQs have, have taken off the two drivers who actually should be starting on the front row. Couple and then on top of that, find Waldo... And then on top of that, Find Waldo has a five-second penalty after from a collision with Taurus, although Waldo was on track, and Taurus came onto the track right into Waldo. It's... So, Waldo looking like he's going to be starting uh, at, at the highest tenth. Uh, he's on an outlap, and Taurus is as well, actually. Taurus is on an outlap as well, so they're fighting for, for fifth at the minute. That's probably the highest well, Waldo, they'll be able to get. For Waldo, if he can just set a lap time, he will at least be guaranteed a spot of... And I'm trying to think here. If he can get a lap in... But wait, if Edgar and Azza got disqualified from this session, does that drop the two of them back to the very back of the mm -hmm. grid for the race itself? <sighs> That's I don't track. know. It's, I think it's disqualified him from Q3 rather than the full qualified. I don't actually know. Okay. Okay, so for Waldo, if Waldo puts on the best time ever, let's say Waldo somehow squeezes it out a 120 flat. All right, yeah. but he has a five-spot grid penalty. He'll be 10th. So he would not be starting 5th. He would be dropped down to 10th. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So he would still be behind Edgar and Asda, even though the two of them have penalties. I think so. So realistically, the fight is just between exits to spot Taurus and Pelly for the 5th position, in all reality. Basically, and Pelly yeah. is still on the racetrack. I mean, Pelly is still in the pit. He's not, <laughs> he's, he made an attempt to come out and then immediately aboard. Didn't even come all the way out of the pit lane. So... This is one of the most bullcrap qualifying set, qualifying rounds, not session, just single round of qualifying I think I've ever seen. There was at least, I, I don't know, I said it was intentional, I, that was harsh of me, I shouldn't have probably said that, but definitely, 
From the scenes that we were looking at, it looked intentional, but the game is also very, very inept and incompetent in many different ways, and that it cannot is. be expressed enough. Um, the stewards will be having a look at it if it, if it gets uh, sent in, which it probably will be. But as soon as it's sent in, stewards will have a look at it, and we'll be able to uh, determine proper, properly uh, whose fault it was and what penalty should be given. Um, until then, we go with what we've what we've got in this qualifying session, which is two minutes fifty for four drivers to set a lap time on intermediate tyres, fighting for fifth place. Waldo with a five-second grid penalty, so he'll be starting uh, tenth at the highest. Um, the other three drivers exits a spot who's on a lap at the minute. Taurus, who's also on a lap, and Pelly, who's been in the pits this whole time. And Taurus invalidated coming out of the S's, so now it's back to X at the spot. It's basically a war of attrition between X and Taurus because the track is getting wetter and wetter, and every time one of these two seem to find the track's limit and figure it out, the track just slips farther and farther away from them. Waldo also went out there, set a lap, and invalidated as well. Wait, it's, it's almost painful watching them fight so, for this. So j is on the front row of the grid. With a destroyed race car at that. j X3 driver on the front row of the of the uh, of the grid alongside XRL low. Absolute scenes. There's been carnage. There's been controversy. And we're still only in qualifying. The race is gonna be sick. And X, another invalidation in the S's. So now the it go now it goes back to Taurus. If either of these could set a lap, again, the, the times are, the, no one's been able to set a time. If Taurus or X can just set a lap in the two minute range, they'd be fine. They'd still lock up for their sixth position. Pelly has not made a single attempt to get out onto the racetrack at all. Ah, so Pelly apparently having issues. Hardware issues on his end. Uh, real quickly, we want to go ahead and start inviting some people into the party. Uh, starting with Azda. Azda, go ahead and include your audio. Fastest lap for a time, then an accident, a spin, a disqualification. What happened from your perspective? Uh, so I I wanted to go for a second run uh, because the track, as I was going through uh, the main straight, didn't feel that, that bad. So. I got through turn one, that was fine, and then it does seem like it hammered down so badly that the slicks were just no more. So, obviously, everyone was having grip issues, um, and then going through the S's, I tore my wing off. I'm surprised I didn't DNF, to be honest, but I hit it just right that I didn't DNF. Um, so then I uh, wanted to go into the pits, obviously, uh, put the power down too early, thinking that, you know, I thought I could put the power down, then I'll say I couldn't. So then I spun, uh, stopped the car, tried to reverse, and it said it was said I was blocking the pit lane and disqualified me. So, um, yeah, not a very ideal place to be, but um, I have high hopes for the race if I don't have a wheel glitch. All right, well, hopefully it works out for you, Oz. Uh, it's a messy final qualifying session. Now coming to the party is Jay Le Lebend. Go ahead, include your audio. An accident for numerous other drivers. It looks like you're going to be starting second in this race with basically a destroyed race car. What do you have to say? I don't even know what to say, to be quite <laughs> honest. Like, like, I mean, I X3 went very well. I qualified eight. I ended up finishing P5. But to be on the front row in X2, uh, I'm a little out of place right now. I'm a little confused. Um, <laughs> And I don't like being on the front row at Mexico, period, because it's not fun. You get eaten alive by everyone coming up behind you with the slipstream. Uh, it's just, uh, I'm nervous about how turn one's going to go down. Well, the thing is, you're in second, which means you can tuck into the slipstream of low, which could help Indeed. you out going into turn one. Yeah, I'm hoping for a good performance, even though when I qualify high, I usually DNF, so there's that. Well, fifth place early right. on today in X3 means that in this, we could be looking at more of the same, potentially. Would be nice. I am fighting to get it, maybe get a seat up here one day. So if I can prove that I can, can compete, then that will only increase my chances to move up here. 
<clears throat> cool. Well, good luck for the race. All right. One more question before you leave real quickly. Every single driver in the top 10 is going to be starting on soft tires on what we are anticipating will be a dry but green with track with almost no grip. Do you have any strategy in mind to try and diversify yourself from the field as the race goes on? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know if I have the pace with some of these guys that are up here uh, to really, like, pull a gap out or anything. So I think the main thing to focus on is just looking after the tires for the first stint. Uh, maybe yes, trying to extend if possible. <clears throat> Thank you, Master. Uh, maybe trying to stretch the stint out if, you know, if that is the possibility. But I think my main focus is just staying alive today. Uh, I'm going to get a right. little tired after X3, so stamina is definitely going to play a role. All right, well, don't let the fact that you crashed your car coming across the line in X3, in, uh, X3, in Q3 deter you from the fact that you are on the front row, and now everyone's hopes and dreams are resting on you. Okay, it's not that serious, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do have some hope. But I do dreams. have some hope. X3 I do have and some dreams. hope. Destiny, Spider Man. Yeah. We'll say X3. Indeed. Hope yeah. Indeed. All right, lads. Well, I'm going to get going. I'm going to prep for this race. And uh, hopefully, I'm on a podium. All right. We'll see at the other end of the event. Hopefully, we'll get to talk to you after the race is over. All right. Cheers. Farewell. Cheers, lads. Well, that was a mess. You know, normally yes. I like seeing rain fall down in the middle of a session, but uh, that was uh, that was pretty much disgusting. There, it was. It just got so wet there coming out of stadium, and it's all very, very slow corners. It's all about having mechanical grip, and you basically steer out of the last corner with the throttle almost, considering how tight it is. So everyone's getting on the throttle, whether they're trying to get into the pit lane or go for another lap. And the track's just not able to keep the cars. The tires are all slick and hot, so they just kind of skid over a wet surface. Like, we saw, I think, what, four drivers spin out of the final corner. And then also Glebin, he spun uh, coming just across the start-finish line. Like, it was, uh, whew, that was nutty. Uh, hilariously yeah, that was enough, crazy, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, hilariously enough, Pelly, who never even turned a lap, he's guaranteed to start something like 7th or 8th. And he never even went out onto the track in that session. Like, because he has hardware issues. Yeah, right. if he's able to get back in time, things will be uh, interesting for him. Yeah, it will be. Anyway, I'm going to go for a quick break. I will be back at the start of the race. All right, enjoy your pizza. All right. Well, anyways, now we just wait for the clock to count down until we get to this event itself. We are anticipating that the race itself should stay dry throughout the entirety. But a very, very messy Q3 shakes up the entire front row of the grid.
Stand by right now until we get underway for the race itself. All right, so a very uh, unexpected front row as XRO Low, who was complaining that he felt extremely slow, ha, huh, rhymes, uh, gets the pull off of everyone else's misfortune, and then Yelebin, who destroyed his car, coming across the line, will be starting second. So a very b bizarre and shaken up front row, and frankly, the entire top ten is just all sorts of messed up. see the top 10 on soft the real question is going to be though how many other people are going to be on soft starting the event as we look down the order you don't see anybody putting on mediums until you get down to 14th mr neon he'll be starting on the mediums as will 16 17 18 shmi zola and flavor everyone else starting this event on soft tires on a green racetrack this this will be very very interesting to say the least And the message has been put out to start the race, so the 30 second countdown has begun. Alright, per usual, Fiend, I just want to ask, would you be willing to focus on the back of the field, cut in if you're seeing accidents or spins, of as course. we focus on what's likely going to be a chaotic run down into turns 1, 2, and 3 here? Of course, of course. All right, and now we see the cars loading onto the circuit, and the lights begin to tick away. Four lights, five lights, and it's lights out. The way we go here in Mexico, and right and off here the we bat, go. is skidding across the circuit, trying to fall in line behind Mo, but he's gonna lose that position to Dino. Here comes Taurus TTV with a huge run. Herbago is there as well. There's three wide for the fourth position right now. Oh, They're wow. trying to get four wide. A Haas makes a huge oh, dive yeah. from behind, and Herbago loses a bunch of positions in the process, but it looks like the front of the grid will get by. Now, too much issue. Mr. Anderson has already bounced up into the sixth position of the start of the race. Waldo, Waldo going really wide into turn one. Anderson going wide on the exit side by side for a second just behind actually as the side by side with waldo and kelly side by side with vertex without accidents which is good going going into the s's azda has to back out from waldo and that leaves him open oh edgar had a massive instant going into the s's now edgar drops out of the top 10 positions and Mr. Anderson had his own issue in the S's. Now he loses the position of Wolo. He might lose the position of Azda as well. Neon making moves up to the grid on the medium tires. He's gotten by Pelly. But at the front, it's Lowe, Dino, exit the spot, and Delevin. 
the top two have opened up a small gap on X and Jalebin. Does the Alpine make a dive going into turn one? He sets up for it, but aborts the attempt. Taurus gets around back there, or gets passed by Herbago back there for the fifth position. And that will leave Taurus open to attack from Waldo in a short period of time. Anderson, Edgar, Torpedo, and Zola all pitting on the first lap, repairing wing damage they took from a sorted contact on the race start. That's not good for them. They're going to need another full course yellow flag to bunch the field up. Otherwise, they'll be at risk of going a lap down. Potentially. Uh, near the front, Waldo is catching Taurus. Taurus going really deep into into the S section, cutting it a little bit, and Waldo might get the run. He's got the run. He looks yeah, to the Asda. outside. They'll be neck and neck. Asda's there, ready to capitalize. Asda going for it as well. And Pelly's and now out. Asda. Now Asda's side by side with Taurus and gets the position, it looks like. And Pelly, an X at the end of the S's, puts the field under a virtual safety car. And a virtual. Taurus with a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane must have had something. Unless he's pitting to get rid of his tires. Contact. I don't think so. Well, maybe. I don't know. But either way, no, that's wing damage. They're seeing they're changing the entire front wing. But that will take Taurus, who qualified in the top 10. It'll take him out of contention for this race for all intents and purposes. This will drop him back to the 14th spot. And, and DRS has been re-enabled. <laughs> nice short yellow flag. Verti immediately gets the jump on Piers of Shu as Shu spun coming out of turn four. Now he drops down to 10th position. And gets a time penalty. All right, coming to the party now is XRL Pelly. Pelly, go ahead and include your audio. Uh, strange to see you out so early, but first I want to hear what was your perspective on that Q3 kerfluffle and nonsense? Uh, Pelly, can you hear us? All right, Pelly might not be able to establish vocal communication with us right now, it would appear. There's a little bit of fighting going on between teammates. Gleben and Herbago have found each other for fourth. Gleben leads, Herbago behind, well, leads that duo. Herbago behind, he has DRS to close in down the straightaway, but he's not closing at a very rapid rate. Couple attempts. But the top, the top three though, all right on top of each other. X Waldo. on Dino, Dino on Low. Waldo and Azda. Azda pushes Waldo wide, but gets the position up into sixth place. Anderson with the fastest lap of the race, a one seventeen point eight. But he does have the advantage of having clean air and fresh, soft tires on the car, so. I guess it shouldn't be too surprising. Uh, up top as well, Dino. Only half a second behind low. And X is within DRS range of both of them. If the two if the two leaders start fighting, X will be in perfect position to do something. Herbago just overtook Gleben coming out of the S is going down into stadium. So it's still an Alpine running fourth and fifth, but uh the order of those Alpines have changed a bit. Now, while they were fighting, it's brought Asda and Waldo into play as well. So we're going to have a four-way fight for fourth position now. Oh, Jalebin, big twitch coming out of the final corner. Dino not really gaining on uh, low, but exits the spot. He's gaining on Dino, so three-way battle here for the lead. As we approach the second DRS zone. Exits the spot, has the advantage of having the draft of two different cars. That'll give him slightly more advantage in the DRS straights. Not really enough to make him, oh my god, oh, he's the greatest man on earth. But it will definitely make him a little bit faster, and that's one of the reasons why he's able to hold on to Dino. As long as those soft tires aren't falling off, he'll be looking very, very good. After the S's, there's another DRS zone to capitalize on. Everyone in the top three, very steady and consistent through the S's. Dino closes Ooh, in just a little bit in the DRS straight. Ooh. 
late break and nearly missed the corner altogether. Lost a little bit of time. Should still have DRS, but he has lost a few turns. You know, it doesn't seem to be very strong on the straightaways compared to Lowe, I would guess. He may have a much, much more downforce focused setup than Lowe does. And the Mercedes is closing this time, though. You're going to go know, for a dive. The inside. And there's a Haas in trouble. That's Anderson. Oh, Anderson. Spinning. And Gleben back by Herbago for fourth. And that leaves Herbago open to attack from Azza. Azza wants to get by both of them down the straight. So does Waldo. Oh, my God. Side by side for fourth. Azza backs out of it, and Waldo capitalizes. He's going to sneak by Azza on the inside. Azza's not happy with that. He's staying with it on the outside, trying to deny the track as much as he can to Waldo. They're neck and neck on the run down to the S's. Someone has to back out. Who's it going to be? Waldo. And that leaves Waldo open to attack from Herbago. Verti, who <laughs> suffered a qualifying ban, is up in eighth, and he's caught this fight now. There we go then, five cars fighting for fourth. What we like to see in it. Mazda now has caught Gleven. Ooh, big twist from the Mercedes coming out of the final corner. But he's still within half a second of the Alpine. Waldo is right behind though in the Haas. He's closing. Dino has just gotten by low in the DRS zone for the lead of the race at the end of turn one. Oh, here here comes Haas on three wide. And here comes Haas. They're three wide. Three wide and Waldo. Ah, gets a three Waldo got the penalty, spot, but, but at the cost position. of a time penalty. The thing is, Azda really popped off there. He got by both of them. Now Waldo's going on the outside of Azda, going into four. Good defending by Azda so far. And he'll keep the position. Good defending there. Stays in fourth. Waldo in fifth. Jayla behind Jayla actually. Herubaga and Verti were side by side for a second. Schmee now has a time penalty back there in the twelfth position, running by himself, trying to catch up to Smoothie. Everyone outside of the top nine, with the exception of Zola, is on some variant of medium tires. So the gap in times from the top nine to tenth and back are significant. Coming on, X has crashed. Oh, he saved the car, but he had a big spin, smacked the inside wall with the rear axle. Somehow that car is not damaged. He'll be able to continue, but he has totally lost touch with the lead pack. Uh, he's lost two and a half seconds, has he? Asda is going to be trying to catch him up a little bit now, now that he's out of DRS. Uh, needs to Herbago, to 11, oh, X, fighting for position. Five second penalty for corner cutting. And Herbago gets back by Jaleben. Verti is there, but he's not able to capitalize yet. Alpine side by side down the straight. What does Verti do? Verti's oh, gonna go ahead and make a side by side. Back. Going around the outside. Going in turn four. Will he be able to hold on to it? Yes! It looks like he'll be able to complete the plan. Complete the plan. Complete the pass at turn five. The vertex up into six. Getting both Alpines in one corner. Waldo, oh, at the front actually, there's half a second in between them. Um, Waldo is half a second behind Asda as well. Ooh, low with a na nasty twitch coming out of the final corner. Mazda still trying to stay ahead of Waldo. So it's a two-man fight for the first and a two-man fight for fourth right now. Verti trying to hold off Herbago as Herbago has DRS on the Alpha Romeo going down to the DRS straights. But it looks like Verti is good enough putting the power down. That's not too much of an excuse me, not too much of an issue. Farther back, um, Mr. Schmee has caught Smoothie for the 11th position. 
and is trying to use DRS to get back by him. Taurus is coming to the pit. I'm assuming he has to repair damage that he's taken somewhere on the circuit. Let's have a look. Yeah, he's changing his wing. I mean, Zola goes into 16th. Mr. Neon only three tenths behind Punitive. Let's watch it. Let's watch. We can have a look at this. Through the S's they go. And coming out. Neon's close enough to have DRS and close in just a little bit on the straight right before Stadium. Exits the spot, pitting out third position now. He's not the only Waldo. one. Waldo has just elected to pit as well. And Jaleb. Oh, sorry, Rubado. So at the front, Neon. Okay. Neon now moves up to seventh position. After not even being in the top 10, he's now in seventh just by virtue of having not made any subs. And he's caught punitive shoes, so he could move up into sixth shortly. The interesting thing to me, though, Herbago, hard tire compounds. This is the same strategy that we saw Chubby Spark using in the X3 race. Can Herbago make the same thing work? Lowe is still within striking range of Dino, and Dino has just gotten a time penalty for track violations in the S's. So now the Balfour lead swings in Lowe's favor. Yeah, if Lowe can hold on and keep up with Dino, then the win will be his. Unless he gets penalties, of course, which, which we hope not. Well, there are still 26 laps left in this event, and time penalties and cautions can go anyway. Our top two leaders coming into the pits now. Will Ozza stay out another lap? Yes, he does, by the looks of it. And Vertix Vertix as well. will stay out as well. Jaleven will come in. Dino, interestingly enough, he elected to come. He has come in. He could have taken the lead, but okay, he decided not to. Mr. Neon now up into fourth position on those medium tires. He's going to try and make it third position as he goes by a punitive shoe with some DRS assist going down the main straightaway. Good overtake. And punitive uh, goes a little bit wide into the first turn. Um, Neon will have uh, DRS again, so he's gone now. So now so Asda and Verti leading the race, but they're doing it on the tires that they started the event on and tires that they turned laps in Q2 with. Low is about six tenths behind, exits a spot, and Waldo actually looked to smooth, with Shmi not too far behind. One of the other drivers who are still on the same set of tires they started the race on. Waldo on fresh mediums. So Waldo will have a slight advantage, although it's not going to be massive. But it doesn't oh. matter. Waldo, he got in the DRS zone, had the run, but backed out of it. So he did not want to get the DRS and make the move on Smoothie going into Stadium. He would have rather waited until he gets on the main straight. All right. Now Azda and Verti are making their stops. That will promote Mr. Neon and Putin Shu into the top two positions. And Dino and Lowe will go back into third and fourth now. So Waldo trying to make a move on smooth now. Next hits the spots coming up very quickly as well. Next hits the spots making a move on uh, smooth on smooth as well. And both drivers get through. That straightaway is so long. If you don't have DRS coming onto it and you're not able to land the ERS for defense. It leaves you like a sitting duck, even if you have a great set of... Well, Azza just blew by Smoothie now yeah, on the I straight think, as well. Yeah, I think Smooth let Azza by there. But either way, Azza's up into seven. So now yeah. it's Neon and Punitive Shoe at the front. Punitive Shoe will likely pit sooner rather than later. The soft tires that he has on have a respectable amount of wear on them. Mr. Neon started on fresh mediums he can stay out for a long time if he so chooses yeah he can stay out about 15 to 20 laps if he wants to also in neon's favor he does not have time penalties while punitive shoe in second does as does dino in third low is running in fourth he has drs on the mercedes trying to close down on the straightaway now 
not the only one. Farther back, Azza trying to close in and make something happen to X hits the spot. Azza to the Dina. inside of X. Easy overtake by Azda. Now Azda up in sixth position. Low in fourth. And Dino locking up again. The gap between Dino and Pierre Shoe has been staying at about four seconds. Closing, but very slowly, mainly because although Punitive's tires are falling off, Dino is having to spend a lot of time holding low behind him. So he's not really able to set the focus on charging forward. Oh, and there's been an instant. And in the final corner, Taurus. The entire yeah, front Taurus. wing ripped off the car. And with the leaders coming through the final corners now, this basically will trap Taurus a lap down. Neon taking a very, very tight exit, staying right against the inside wall. Punitive Shoe has a run on him. Does Punitive Shoe make the dive going into one? The answer is yes. For the lead, Punitive Shoe scoots by Mr. Neon. Neon tries to fight back going into turn two, but Shoe already has the lane of choice and DRS on the subsequent straightaway. Yeah, nothing Neon can do there, is there? So, uh, up into first. I think he still needs to pit, doesn't he? Yeah, the top two will still need to pit. They've not, they're still on the same tires that they started this race on. Azda now gets a time penalty while he's trying to run down Waldo. So now we're starting to see the time penalties build up across the field. Those soft tires that Punitive Shoe were on must be dying of death right now. They Can't definitely are. Dino, is, Dino and Lowe are now closing in on Shoe and Neon with speed. Zola in pit lane, and more than likely we'll see Zola going a lap down very shortly here. Maybe. Simply because of the pace difference. Maybe he's coming out of the pits now, so not, not just yet. And with the top two still having to pit, which he does, punitive shoe goes into the pits. So that gives Mr. Neon the lead for a little bit longer, but the gap between Neon and Dino has closed to about two and a half seconds. Shoe throwing on hard tires of all decisions for the end of the to the end of the race. So Trying that's a bold stop. strategy. He might be, but well, either that or he might be betting on a late race yellow flag, bunching the entire field up. He can come in, throw on a set of soft tires, and be the fastest person on track. Maybe, maybe. It's a big risk considering we're nearly halfway through and not got the safety car yet. The Alpines of Delebend and Herbago have been fighting back and forth through, between each other for most of this race. But as they've been fighting, they've been hemorrhaging positions. They were up there fighting in the top five. Now they're eighth and ninth with Shmi and Pierre de Chou likely to close in on them as this goes on. So. Herbago and J-Lab are still fighting. Oh my goodness. Low and Dina yep. are still there. At the back, Torpedo's catching up caught to Flavor within half a second now. All right, Low has a run on Dino going down the main straight once more. He's within a third, within a quarter, a fifth, a tenth of a second. He dives to the inside and backs out of it. There's been a yellow flag in sector three. That's Taurus again, another accident oh in the last corner for Taurus. So in he made the top 10, but has not been able to keep the car clean for more than about four laps here. So not low, very by. interesting. Smith. Low had, oh, there's someone else. That's Herbago. Oh, Herbago spun. And that will drop on. him out of the points paying positions. Down to 12th now. Interesting for uh, Lowe. Lowe had a run on Dino, and he was right in position to make an overtake, and then suddenly backed out and just stopped trying. He backed right out, mm -hmm. totally aboard the attempt, 
And in the process, it's brought Waldo up into the fight. So now Waldo is in position to fight with these guys. So that may have really compromised Low long term because Waldo's now going to throw a monkey wrench in their plans. I think Low's just trying to stick with Dina, knowing that they're catching Neon up front. And then fight later on once they've got past Neon. But Low is going for the move here, which is, I think, what he was waiting, looking for anyway. And gets the position, well, Dino. Now Dino. Now Dino's going to have the problem that he doesn't have DRS, and Waldo behind does have DRS. So Dino can't fight back against Low this time. He has to worry about Waldo behind. Waldo not close enough to capitalize, but Low now within 1.2 seconds of Mr. Neon, your current race leader. Neon stretching the medium tires farther than anyone else on track, with the exception of Flavor and Mr. Schmee. Coming up to around about his pit window now, 16 laps. They go about. The strategy is to kind of take these to 16 laps and then go on soft, so. We've got another yellow flag and it's Taurus again breaking his wing on the on the final corner. How many pit stops has he done now? Uh, looking real quickly. This is his fourth stop. And Neon pits now. So Neon into the pits. Lowe inherits the lead, and Lowe was within DRS range of Neon. So Lowe has a lap of free DRS that he can use as a defense against Dino and try to walk away from him. So now Dino is going to have to worry about Waldo just as much as he has to try and run down Lowe. We'll come out behind Jaleb. So Neon comes out in eighth place. Um, but at the front, we've got three drivers fighting. Low with the advantage in this little fight. He does not have time penalties while the three drivers behind, Dino, Waldo, Azza, all do. And obviously, we're only halfway through this race. That can change. See if that hits the spot can keep up as well. He'll be in a good position to take second place at the end of the race. Well, X just got a time penalty of his own oh, now, fair, so... Fair. So then that brings Vertex into play if he can catch up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, X is the spot does need to overtake them now. Low in the lead, keeping these two at bay. What can he do there? So low, so low, not happy with the car in qualifying, was really stunned at the kerfluffery that happened in Q3 that gave him the pole after two much faster drivers were disqualified. But he's showing, he's making work of it. He's capitalizing on this opportunity that's been blessed to him, to say the least. Oh, 100%, he's, he's racing well uh, today. Keeping Dino and Waldo at bay is not an easy thing to do, especially when Waldo's leading the championship and, and I think Dino's up there as well. Um, so to be leading the race with these two drivers behind is not an easy thing to be doing. One other advantage that Lowe will have in this fight, it won't be massive, but will build up as this run goes on. He has clean air on the front wing and on the tires of the car, so he doesn't have to turn or be as aggressive with the tires in the downforce focus sections of the S's. That Asda's out! Oh, Asda. That's unlucky from Asda. He and that's a full well. course safety car. Oh, Asda racing All right, well. well coming in, all right, well, coming in the party now is XRL Asda. Asda, go ahead and include your audio. Massive accident in the S's, and you were having a great run. What happened out there? Yeah, I just, um, I was strategically placing my car bang in the middle of the curb so I could get um, a good exit at, um, in the S's, etc. Um, and I just didn't do that that time, put two wheels on it and um, obviously with this year's car having more floor downforce it disturbed that so it just threw me out into the uh, into the wall basically. Alright, it's a tough thing to see, see that happen to you. You had pole position unfairly removed from you, then this taking you out of the race. Not a great end to this year, but do you think you can rebound going into Brazil in 2022? Um, I hope so. Um, I didn't have a wheel glitch in the race or quality, and you've seen my pace, so um, 
wheel glitches are truly holding me back so if I don't get a wheel glitch in Brazil I'll be very happy because it's my favourite track. Alright, well, thanks for being willing to talk with us. It's a shame to see you out so early. Thank you. Alright, so uh, here's some, there's some very interesting decisions made under the safety car. You'd think everyone should just go ahead and pit and put on like a set of mediums or a set of softs to the end, right? Well, there are some exceptions. The left end is on a set of mediums that already have tire wear on them. This has promoted him up into the fourth position, though. Torpedo is now up in ninth, but he is on medium tires that he's been on almost since the start of this race. Flavor is on medium tires that he's been on since he was involved in lap one incidents. And Mr. Anderson is on a set of medium tires that he's been on for about 13 laps as well. So, and Zola is on a set of soft tires that already have five laps on them. So, want to talk about weird. This is a very weird scenario for those drivers. I don't know why they didn't elect to go ahead and pit and put some better rubber on. I'm not sure. I mean, Dino on hards. Interesting choice. Uh, won't get as much wear, but you won't have as much pace. Uh, exits a spot will struggle to get to the end on soft. Um, Zola, well, I'm expecting Zola to pit actually at the end of this lap. Anderson, 13 laps. He's got a few laps. Now left torpedoes in pitted. Okay, torpedoes pitted. That's that's okay. Flavin and needs Flavor to pit, which is now he is. as well. Yeah, but this fine. will drop Torpedo and Flavor out of the points paying positions, unsurprisingly. No, but... pitted. And Zola has as well. Okay. So, everybody on fresh tires now. Well, Majority. Torpedo actually put on tires that have two laps of wear already on them. I think okay. those are the tires he started the race on. Interesting oh, decision. Right. Yeah, uh, Flavor puts on softs, but Flavor is very good at preserving tire wear so I'm sure that flavor will see those to the end Anderson puts on fresh mediums Zola puts on fresh mediums as well uh, Taurus one lap down he has slightly worn soft some but it's just it's not been his day to say at least he did good in, to get into Q3 but it's just been a mess after mess after that for him yeah I mean how, how far did flavor take his tires earlier on in S3 yeah, well, he was on the same strategy as Nissan, and Nissan cut a tire in the stadium section on the last lap. And yet, Flavor, when he was asked afterwards, he was like, oh yeah, sure, I still had like a little bit more than 75% to go, or something like that. He said something like that, like he had only used three quarters of the tires. Like, he doesn't have a lot of pace, but his ability on tire management has been very, very, very good. That, coupled with the fact that he's good at avoiding time penalties, allows him to, even with some bad strategies, usually make up lots of positions post-race. He's running 12th right now, and if the race is to finish the way it is right now, he would at least move up to 11th just due to the way the time penalties are have been distributed thus far. All right, so we should be going green on lap 22. Uh, this will be a very, very interesting restart, to say at least, because with the exception of the 11, everyone on track is on tires that only have... Well, with the exception of the 11, everyone who's on the lead lap is on tires that only have two laps of wear or less on them. So... Uh, I think Exit's the spot is going to be flying for about seven, eight laps, but his momentum's going to stall out, and even if he gets into the lead, he has time penalties while Lowe does not. I think this will be a good gambit for him to get into the podium positions, assuming that the tire fall is not going to be too bad for him. But I think the win's out of his hands. I think, realistically, this is Lowe's race to lose. I think it could well be uh, Lowe's race to lose. Vertex has got the pace as well to, to get up there. Can he get a podium with no time yeah, This penalties? is a good point. Verti has fresh medium tires. The mediums, without a doubt, will last to the end of the race. But here's the other thing I do want to go ahead and say. If we have another full-course safety car, Jalebin, depending on how spread out the field may or may not get and how time penalties fall, Jalebin could come in, throw on a set of softs, and charge up through the field. He might be really, really, might be looking pretty bad now, but, you know, if he gets a set of free softs late in the event that he can throw on, he could make some crazy charges up through the grid. He could, but, but, oh, that could be a five seconds, could it? 
between Jeff. Yeah, J Lab yep. and Waldo getting a five seconds each. And that basically will take them out of race contention unless those time penalties get removed post race. Yeah. So now it goes back to being between Dino and Lowe. Dino on harder tires and with time penalties. He's going to have to really find something in his hat to pull out as they come to the green flag here. Lowe shoots out of there like a cannon, as does Dino. Oh, Already Bertie and Shu is out. And there's a multi car accident back there. He's not the only one. There's a. Red Bull back there Bertie. as well that was caught up. Yeah, Verti as well. Somehow that's not a full oh, force wow. yellow, but Punitive Shoe out. Verti out. That promotes Mr. Neon up into the sixth position. Well, Vertex is in 15th with a five second penalty and pitting, so he's way out of contention now. Uh, what's this? Torpedo and Smooth side by side. And that torpedo gets ahead. Waldo only four tenths behind Dino now. All right, coming into the party now is Punitive Shoe. Shoe, go ahead and include your audio. Big accent coming to the green flag. What happened there? Well, I just just didn't expect him to um, spin. Couldn't do much because he was planted in the middle of the road. I uh, tried going to the left hand side of him, but he reversed. So I just went into him. Not do much, to be fair. All right, nasty instant. You had a good finish in X3, not turning out to be the case in X2. Do you think you can rebound, though, if you got invited to the X2 race at Brazil in a few weeks? Yeah, well, um, I was pretty shocked that I was in P2 and P1 at, at one point. And, you know, I didn't expect much in X3, but to finish in the top 10 in X3 and then come to this race, you know, I thought I'd be outside the top 10 and not doing much, but to actually have decent pace around there and be actually battling was some of the guys in next two was quite shocking to me so yeah hopefully in Brazil I'll be able to do the same and get a decent result I think I was on for a decent result today as well uh, going on to the hards uh, before I could like I was on the softs to start with and I made them go longer uh, than anticipated and then put on the hards and thought I could go all the way to the end from them but the safety car came out put on the mediums and unfortunately they start but you know, that goes on. Alright, well thanks for being willing to jump in and talk with us. It's a shame to see you out after the good run you were having. No worries. Thank you. Alright, we turn our focus back to the racetrack. Very interesting fight. Dino versus Waldo versus X. Dino on hard, Waldo on mediums, X on softs. This could go any way, frankly. And while these three are fighting, Lowe is walking off with this race win. Yeah, low gone off into the distance. Um, Hrubaga with a three second time penalty. Waldo having the run on Dino. Can he get move done? Not quite. Oh, he can. He's diving it up the inside. Contact! And that compromises Dino so much that Dino falls behind both Waldo and X. Now, X will have to defend against Dino going into turn four, though. X going defensive. There's enough to keep the position. Not sure if there was contact between Waldo and Dino or not. But Dino definitely went really, really wide and therefore lost out on the position. Um, Vertex would be the fastest lap for this. So we know those Alpha males are fast. One of them's leading, the other just set the fastest lap of the event. All right, so now things have changed. Dino, those hard tires have completely no speed compared to fresh sauce for fresh mediums. He is hemorrhaging time right now compared to Waldo and X. He does close in a little bit in the stadium section, but it seems like every time it needs to power out, he's just a little bit slower and a little bit more awkward putting the power down, and he's just losing time after time after time as X has the run on Waldo going down the straightaway using DRS, what can he do? He gets a move done before the break-in. That was, that was easy for him on those soft tires. Edgar gets by Deleben back there, and Deleben now no DRS, and he'll have to be holding up Mr. Neon and Herbago going down the second straightaway. Ooh, Herbago switches! He's... Does save it, but he very nearly spun out. So now Jaleben only has to hold off Mr. Neon. 
Where does Neon go? Neon looks. He'll think better of oh, making he, a move. Mm. Oh, no, he does. He does make a move. He goes into the back of Jayla to make a move. And then pulls out side to side. Uh, but Jayla still, still ahead, which is okay for him. Something must be wrong with Herbago because he's not been able to make the last few corners at all now. Maybe Smoothie been... right behind. He's in position to close in maybe on Herbago. Now Herbago's got a three second time penalty. He's got a great run from Neon here. Great exit from the S's. Side by side with Neon. And now into Stadium. Still side by side in Stadium. In the final corner, will anyone back out? No, no one will back out. Uh, but Neon keeps the position. That helps Jayla to uh, pull away a little bit. And none of them will get DRS either. Vertex with the one who does get DRS, and that is going to be Smoothie. So Smoothie able to close in on Herbago. Might be able to make a move on the Alpine for eight, going into turn four. Not close enough by the looks of it. Yeah, he just backs off so he doesn't get too close. Keeping his tires. Alright, so at the front, so cool. uh, obviously the soft tires will eventually start falling off, but exits the spot on sheer speed and merit of those soft tires. He is running down XRL low at the front. And that gap before was like nearly three seconds, and now it's down to less than a second. And the top three once again. About like that, but we have a yellow Oh, flag. Herbago goes out. Herbago's DNF. And a safety car. And that's a full course safety car. And that happened after the leader. Oh, low. Low got it. Low timed it perfectly. Low jumped into the pits, as did oh, Waldo. Nice. X is out on track. See. On worn soft tires, this has gone horrible for X. See, now's the perfect time to go into the pits onto soft tires. And pit onto those. And then you've got fresh softs to the end. This is what you were saying earlier with uh, j -Lab. So this has worked out perfectly for him. With 16 lap old mediums pitting onto softs. The only downside is it looks like they had to serve a time penalty in the pits, so he'll fall to yeah, about 10. Yeah, five seconds. But yeah, regardless, at least in. the time penalty is off. The only problem, though, is that now everyone except for the top two have fresh softs. Yeah. Shmi on seven lap old mediums. Yes, he's got trap position, but... He may get eaten alive. Anyway, while the safety car's out, I'm going to go for a... to grab a drink very, very quickly. I'll be back in a minute or so. Got to. Mm hmm we're going to try and reach out to Herbago, see what happened from his perspective that took him out of the race. Shmi does have one advantage. His tires will last to the end of this race. The bad news, though... They're not going to be very fast. Everyone behind is on fresh or relatively fresh tires. Mr. Anderson was nearly a lap down at one point in the event. He's back into the points main position. Zola was a lap down. Now he's back on the lead lap in 12th. Things have gone curiouser and curiouser, to say the least. And we are anticipating going green on lap 30. Herbago not able to jump in with us simply because he doesn't have a mic. I apologize for that. Here's a look at time penalties. Six seconds worth of time penalties for exit spot. Nine for Shmi. Three for Waldo. Three for Dino. Three for Edgar. While Lowe still has none. Neither does Smoothie or Mr. Neon. Three seconds of time penalties for Anderson. Six for Delebend. For Flavor and Zola, no penalties. Torpedo, Verti, three seconds. And Tars, who is a lap down, he has six seconds. So... And I think at this point, Tars doesn't even have any more tires left that he can jump onto. And being a lap down anyways, there's not really a whole lot he can gain by trying to throw on new rubber now. Might as well wait until the last four laps and uh, throw on rubber then to try and get fastest lap points.
Safety car coming in this lap, so we'll be going green on lap 29. Not 30, I thought it wasn't gonna be until 30, but no, we're going green lap 29. So, about eight laps to go. Yeah, eight laps to go at the line. No, we're going green lap 30, I'm sorry. So seven laps to go. How does X back up, bunch up the field coming to the green flag? He puts the power down, across the line. Low immediately trying to make moves on Mr. Schmee. From the field farther back fanning into a mess. Still 15 cars on the racetrack this late in the race. Does anyone back out of it? No need to, it looks like everyone's gonna get through. Schmee loses a position to Waldo and Lowe. He's gonna lose another position potentially. He's trying to fight back but does not have the speed putting the power down. Edgar now is gonna get around him potentially. And the medium tires with no pace seem to be a massive issue. And back at the front, Low chasing down X at the spot X with worn soft tires and lots of time penalties. Waldo wants Low to get held up by X long enough so that way Low starts getting time penalties and they can make it an actual fight to the end. Ooh, Waldo, Edgar, neck and neck for fourth and fifth and Edgar is actually gonna power up through in the stadium section. And there's a virtual safety car, and Taurus has finally crashed out of the event. It's taken almost all day, sadly, after incident after incident, but he is finally out. So a virtual safety car. For Taurus finally crashing out, and coming in the party now is Taurus. Taurus. Good job in qualifying game in Q3, but a rough time in the race. What happened from your perspective today? <clears throat> from my perspective, um, well, I did really good in qualifying. It's just that um, when race started, um, JLE Ben was really slow on lap one, so it caused me to go down the grid. And then when I when I try to come back up. Uh, my my teammate doesn't even allow me to overtake him when uh, I was trying to go back to the grid so that caused me to fall down again and um, with this one the last incident uh, vertex didn't give me no room so he um, uh, so he bumped me it, it seemed uh, it seemed like a bump to me and it caused me to crash. All right, it's a shame to see this happen to you. Do you think you can bounce back at Brazil? Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confident. I, I, I've, I've done really well on, uh, on the past uh, X2 uh, uh, qualifying. Last qualifying, I couldn't even um, race because of uh, my tornado uh, incident. Yeah, because because of the tornado incident, my Wi-Fi was uh, wacky, but. I did manage to do uh, one qualifying and I got to a P1 in, in the last qualifying I did. But I couldn't race because Wi-Fi issues. Alright, well, shame to see you out like this. But hopefully things will go better for you later. Thanks for jumping in and talking with us post after the end of your event. Yes, of course. Alright, Mr. Schmee on track on the mediums has basically become a hazard. Almost like a rolling chicane. Everyone is way faster than him, but being able to get by him cleanly has been a big, big issue. Verti now caught behind the Red Bull, trying to get by on the run down into Stadium. He looks to the inside. Looks like it will be an easy overtake. No, it's not. And he's around Retire. in front of the field. Oh, dear. Contact. Just a little bit too aggressive into that chicane, into that corner. And he's spun out. So next for Shmi is Zola, who will have DRS, it looks like. And so it should be academic for him. Uh, Anderson and Smooth. Anderson getting past Smooth. Well, a little bit further up. And Zola. 
gets past uh, Shmi. Torpedo getting past well, uh, Flavor. And, and while all that's happened, Lowe overtook X very easily in the DRS zone, and now Dino's oh, trying to do the same. A There's contact. a little bit of contact, though. X on those very worn soft tires. Now he's the one acting like a rolling chicane, and that's going to let Lowe run off with this win more than likely. Edgar gets a time penalty cutting the circuit as he's just trying to stay ahead of Waldo right now. If Dino can get past X hits the spot on the next uh, main straight, then he could be uh, catching, catching low pretty quickly. The thing is that he needs low to get a time penalty or low to he have does. an accident. Otherwise, it's, low, it's still Lowe's race to lose. It is. Lowe's in a great position right now. Dino with DRS then makes it the spot. Side by side. And Here comes Edgar now. Oh, and Edgar. Oh, nearly three wide. Yeah, Dino gets past. Edgar goes wide on the exit. And oh, no, they're around. And a mad exit. Oh. And your points leader. Five Wado has an accident. Okay. And Anderson has to sneak through. A bunch of drivers have to sneak through. Barely getting by the carnage that's there out of turn Bloody one. Bloody hell. That was... Um... And your points leader. Find Waldo. He's out of the race. That could have been so much worse. Um, if one of the other drivers getting through had misjudged the situation. But it's too late for a safety car now. So we're still racing. Edgar and Edgar Dino. Edgar trying to see what he can do on Dino. Farther back, this has now promoted Anderson up in the fourth position with Smoothie fifth. With the yellow flag. Oh, no, it's been green again. I don't know what was happening And there. the damage that X, the damage that X is the spot has is, is bad enough that although it looks like he should be able to continue the race, he's going to be trapped basically 13th dead last to the end of the event, sadly. It's and two Edgar. laps to go. Edgar gets past Dino outside. for second. Easy DRS assisted overtake for him. Farther back, Neon trying to do a St. Dan Deleben. Same thing, easy DRS assist overtake. Torpedo has gotten by Zola. Dino sticking with Edgar. Less than four tenths between them. There's still one more lap after this one that could really upset the way this race ends for second. Definitely. We saw an X3, a bonsai move, or several bonsai moves going on for an incredible fight to the finish there. Who knows how it could go here? The drivers here are so close to each other multiple things could happen and we're about to start the final lap of the race with Lowe in the lead. Edgar second, Dino Edgar was third. Not, Edgar was not close enough to Lowe to get DRS. He's trying to maximize draft off of Lowe, but is not close enough to really do anything. Dino is closing, but I don't think he's closing enough to make a move at the end of the straight here. Not this one. He's got two more DRS zones that he can use if he can get close enough. DRS with the Smoothie, stream. Mr. Anderson fighting for fourth and fifth. It looks like Smoothie will take fourth from Anderson now. And Smooth has DRS. Dino has. D yeah, Dino has one more DRS zone that he can try and muster a charge. Otherwise, he'll have to hope that Edgar makes a mistake in one of the more technical sections. Dino's fallen off now of Edgar, falling out of DRS range, so it looks like the top three are locked in position now. Potentially, yeah. Further back, Anderson has DRS on smooth, but can't get close enough. Oh, Delepin! And, and Delepin gets here? hit from behind by Torpedo! Oh, and Torpedo. And exits the spot, time penalty, and everything's gone crazy now. This will promote Shmi up into 10th, Flavor gets up into 11th now. Everything's gone mad in the back. What's happened? Torpedo living up to Her his namesake. 
Verti's car is wounded. I think Shmi has might have a damaged car as well. Zola comes through in second. Torpedo in eighth. Vertix ninth. Shmi tenth. Oh, Vertix. Flavor, Flavor in the points. Wow. Finishing ninth on penalty countback. Oh, wow. Outstanding job on his part. And also, watch X hits the spot. He might be able to steal fastest lap point at the very end of this race. What a but in the end, finish for flavor. In, yeah, but in the end, XRL Low might not have gotten the pole in the way that he was anticipating, but he capitalized on it, pretty much dominated the entire race with some good strategy calls and some great drives. And your is your winner here at X2 at Mexico. Trying to get low into here real quickly. And after the disappointment that Lowe's had um, recently in some in some of the races, to get the win here must yeah, feel good. Yeah, this is. Yeah. All right. Coming into the party right now is XRL Low. Low. <sighs> it was a very very controversial Q3. That got you the pole position, but you didn't let that slow you down at all. You put your knee on the field's neck today and dominated from start to finish pretty much. What do you have to say about oh, that run today? I'm on the moon. I am feeling so good. Um, this is probably one of the hardest races I've ever had. Um, my teammate honestly pushed me through this so much. Uh, I don't know what I would do without him right now, but to be honest, Oh, I'm so happy and overwhelmed with uh, a lot of joy right now. Honestly, I could cry. I'm pretty fucking happy. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> now, hello. Go ahead. No, Sweat it out. Sweat it out. Tear it out. That was that was absolutely very well earned. <sighs> How? It, I won't lie. From our end, it looked like you were in the catbird seat all day long. Per almost perfect strategy calls. I didn't. I, you didn't seem to make any significant mistakes. You finished the race with no time penalties. Like, that was amazing. I know. I didn't even get a warning. Like, I, I was on point today. Like, today was what I should be. You know what I mean? This is what I should be. Uh, so I'm, like I said, I'm over the moon. Uh, back to my team and just helping me so much throughout each lap. Just stay, keeping me focused. The people in my chat keeping me focused. Shay, Travis, everyone on my Twitch right now. Just thank you. Thank you all for pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. Uh, I'm so glad I didn't let anyone down and got the win. Got the points and let's kind of move up a bit and uh, go back to the schedule and see what's the next race. I believe it's Brazil, so it's time Brazil. to get testing. Yes. It is. All right. Well, it's good to hear you so excited. <laughs> worn out, but worn out for a good purpose. Oh, yeah. Lo, I'm you're a winner buckets. from the poll here at Mexico. <laughs> I'm sweating buckets right now. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, great well job. Done. Next driver I want to talk to, our ninth place finisher, XRL Flavor. Flavor, your appearances in the next two, there's not been a lot of them. But coming home in the points today in what was a very chaotic event, Walk us through the race from your perspective, Flavor. It's the first time I've been in the next two. Um, I always thought I wouldn't be fast enough, I don't think. So I've never volunteered before. Um, but yeah, um, all I want to do is keep clean, keep out of people's way, not getting people, if, you know, I envision you might get lapped at some point if we didn't get safety cars. But no, um, awesome. I just kept going, kept plugging away, kept staying clean, keeping out of people's way or trying to, give them space in, in the corners and that. Yeah, just great. I loved it every second of it and i can't believe that i finished in the point i really can't and your le next man your last man was chuffed i'm more fucking chuffed <laughs> i can tell you <laughs> <laughs> flavor not only that one other thing i'm really really excited to say you took place in i believe four different races this weekend dev yep. realistic x3 and x2 yep. you've took home points in all four of those events no, I didn't. I I I um oh, I, I got did. crashed out in the um, realistic last night, right at the end, as with Zola and um, 
Legend and there oh, was another okay. car, and I, I yeah, I couldn't right. put it on my trailer, but so apart from that one, but to be honest, okay. you're not far away because I've raced all week very, very good. Um, yeah, especially this week, and I've raced really, really well. Very happy with myself, very proud of myself, very pleased with myself. Yeah, it's all I want to do is compete, and I feel that I'm doing that a little bit, so it's good. Yeah, right. every, every well, week flavor. we see you improving. Yeah, like, yeah. week yes. on week, and this week, especially at Mexico, <sighs> you've been really, really strong this week. Yeah, thank you. Um, I say just keep going, just keep plodding, putting me head down. Um, sometimes it's one step forward, two back, you know it is. So just keep going and just keep trying to improve. Um, thank you to everyone for keep encouraging me and keep, you know, yeah, thank you. Um, and thanks for the All encouragement right. to maybe come into X2 tonight as well. So nice one. Thanks. All right. Well, Flavor, keep up the positive momentum going into the next year because it's going to be Brazil next. Yeah. Can I just wish everyone a happy Christmas and a, a good new year um, and other religious holidays are available. All right. So just have a good time. <laughs> All right. Uh, Merry appreciate Christmas. It. We, Thanks, we appreciate boys. you being willing to reach out. I hope you enjoy your holidays as well. Or, well, maybe I should say <laughs> Honda days, but you're not driving an Alfa Tari <laughs> or a Red Bull in this series. So no. maybe that's not a good comparison for you. No, it's not a very good joke either, but never mind. We'll get over that. <laughs> <laughs> See you, boys. Thank you. All right. No worries. Well... With that in mind, that wraps up the last interview that at least I'm going to be doing for XRL over this weekend. And, you know, Fiend, I'm going to be honest. This has actually been a very, very good race. Not super controversial. There's definitely some crazy moments, but nothing super crazy, super controversial. Nice, straightforward. Now, qualifying is a different story, obviously. Yeah, but the yeah. race itself, I mean, Q3 very, was, very nice. Yeah, Q3 was, was a little bit... A little bit controversial, wasn't it? But the race was just amazing. Man, lo loaded so, so well, especially after he was feeling last night, after a realistic, you know, to come out and win today. No wonder he's over the moon. Well, not just that. Lowe said in the Discord chat before they started up Q3 that he does not, he didn't feel very comfortable with that car. And he ended up getting pole. Granted, not under any normal circumstances, but he got lucky, got the pole position, and he took it and ran with it. Like, you want to talk about capitalizing on things. I know there is the long-standing debate in racing over uh, learned talent versus taught talent. And there are some people who have learned talent, some people who have taught talent. But there's another element to that debate I've always been very, very strongly thinking of, and that is the ability to capitalize on a scenario and just do the right thing when the opportunity presents itself. I'm thinking of people like Jensen Button or James Hunt, people who they may have not always been like your top drivers, but when the opportunity presented, they maximize that opportunity. I think what we saw here from Lowe was a perfect example of that, capitalizing on your opportunities yes definitely a lot of it's a mental game as well like mentally being in the right in the right frame of mind to be able to to race like what we've seen today and the way he capitalized on his opportunity on the opportunities that came his way like you said it's just really good stuff really good to see today mm -hmm. all right well with that in mind this broadcast has sadly gone a little bit more than two hours so I didn't want to make this broadcast run long, but sadly it did. But anyways, Fiend, I want to say thank you very much for having me on for today's broadcast. And That's I'll be okay. looking forward to seeing you next year for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 always good commentating with you. Um so yeah, thanks for thanks for joining X2 yep. and uh, Merry Christmas. Yep. For everyone who wants more XRO racing action, well, uh you'll have to wait about three weeks. Once we're in the Second full weekend of 2022 will be going underway with Brazil races, dev, realistic, X1, X2, X3 on your normal times, on your normal days of the week. During the off time, though, I don't know if XRL is going to be doing anything or not. I probably won't be with them if they will. But irregardless, hope you all have a happy holidays, a happy Honda days, and in my opinion, a wonderful Toyota-thon. But anyways, farewell and goodbye.